system. So anytime there's well, an the guy one came back and push. said they, we do not sync up to TOPS and we can't do it. But manually. what is TOPS? What's the acronym for that? TOPS is the accounting system that Alliant uses for all their properties okay. that they manage. I mean. This is what I mean though, holding the board accountable and holding yourselves accountable. Why is Tammy the only one answering these questions? Uh, she, like, she's our property manager. Number, I, one. number two, the gentleman that usually sits here who happens to be out of the country is the chairman of the committee that's working on that and they're working on it. We have to look at what we're doing. You just suggested a few minutes ago that maybe we should have some full-time people handling this stuff. We just heard from these people, they don't want the budget so high. No, I said Which it should move to, to the people who were currently paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to use those services then. I'm not trying to put you guys on the defensive, but you volunteer for a position and with great responsibility, with great privilege comes great responsibility. That's all I'm saying. Can I just yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth, answer about the ARC you mentioned? And I know there's been talk as I get, I'm not on social media, but I do get captions sent to me. And one of the ARCs, it was submitted after the fact, after the meeting that they had. And that issue that they were asking for required to do research. When the ARC gets together, and if it's something new, they have to do research, they have to figure out what's best for the whole community, not just the individual a request, because you're making a decision basically how it's going to be followed for it. You're, you're basically setting a standard. Um, so we had a few of those. And it's, it's sometimes it's just if they pass the deadline and then the committee has to meet and the majority has to decide, so it's not a one-person decision. So it does take sometimes a little bit of time. If, like you said, in your case, it was um, the painting. If it's followed, if the colors are in the book and it's followed, it's an easy approval. But there's some that require a lot more investigating. And like I said, it's, it's, you're making a decision. You're setting a precedent. And one of those that was discussed is a very difficult yeah, I mean, that was just the suggestion was right. that, you know, if we're starting to go with one phase digitally, then maybe we create the opportunity for more things that take a long time. That, that It's often a complaint of the community members to go more things digitally to kind of expedite the process. Also, but also the ARC does go out and visits every property that submits. Sometimes you get a knock on a door if it's some questions that we have. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you'll get an email to come and explain a little bit more. But they do go out to every single property, and like I said, um, and it's usually, I mean, you have to coordinate a few people to go out. You cannot go out by yourself because then it's... Sure. You know, so it, it does take a little bit of time. Okay. Okay. Last one. Ron? Rufo, you've what? I said what I had to say. <coughs> we could let you go again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Moving on. The next item would be uh, the minutes of the last meeting. Do we have any corrections or additions? I move that we accept the minutes as published. With conditions? With, uh, with changes? With, with changes, with changes? No, not yet. No second. Okay, I have a second. Does anybody have any comments on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, next is... Uh, my report. Well, first of all, we still have a few folks here. I'd like to personally thank the maintenance crew of the golf course and their superintendent, John, for the outstanding way they responded to the uh, Ian. Within two days, this place on the main drags looked pretty darn good. They had the streets cleaned fairly well the first day. Second day, they were piling stuff up, blowing it away, and then they hauled it away. We looked nice back the way we should look, except for the side street. Uh, the city has contracted with somebody to pick up the uh, brush we have. You have a question in the back? Uh, Monday, because I was Monday we were having a luncheon for the CPB workers for Diagsound. And I told them that we wanted to bring big goods over or something for their reserve for them. Really appreciate it. Okay. I think it's usually at noon. Okay, the village uh, contracted with an outfit to uh, clean up uh, the storm debris. They came in and started on uh, Sheridan Run and then there was some kind of uh, 
a government brouhaha or whatever, and they weren't back. Well, they came in today, and they've hit two or three streets already. They got Brixham. Yeah, they got Brixham. I know they were on Burwich. And uh, some of the trucks that are loading are uh, loading by hand. I don't know if they got the clam. They got the clam. They had a clam truck in, so they've increased in what they're doing. They are not picking up anything in plastic bags. Or paper. Or paper, or paper bags. So. Wow. I got a question. What do you want us to do? Dump them on the ground? I think that's yes. what they want. Yeah, yes. dump them. But I mean, this is. I know. I, I, hey, we don't make the rule. <laughs> they, they, what they do is. Don't drive down more much more. Yeah, what they do is. Dump every bag on the ground. That's yeah. ridiculous. Well, look what, they what do they've is done. They, 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 they picked up my neighbors. They picked yeah. up all the, the loose branches, but he had paper bags there. Yeah. And guess what? Paper bags are still there. Okay, I'll dump them. They don't need them either. They don't yeah. And that's what's in these bags. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Jeez, hopefully, geez. hopefully the horticulture will. Once this is out of here, horticulture should start coming back. Your... No, 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 I mean, hopefully the uh, uh, waste management horticulture will come and pick up those. Right. Yeah, but kind of like what I was reading, the reason why they don't do that is because they go and they mulch it and they use it for a clean fill. So they don't want right. to have any plastic yeah, yeah. in it. That's, mean, that's why, why I was surprised our, they didn't take, take that's paper. That's why our landscaper won't pick up the paper bags. Yeah. Really? They ask to really? They can't. Well, if they go to mulch, they take it to a place uh, to mulch. If they're in there, they get fined. Really? Yeah. Yes. The paper bank? The paper bank. Really? really? Now, that's not the city. That's our individual. Right. No, I understand. I, you know, so, I mean, I can dump them all out, but... I don't know what to tell you. I, I, mean, yeah. that's just I don't know what to tell you. Well, look at the poor people that cleaned everything up that got flooded in other town. Well, take your piles apart and put yeah. the appliances here, this oh. here. That, it, uh, I, I don't know what to tell it, you. It's oh, a, no, that's... I'll, I'll dump them. It's, it's I, the I wheels of government. It, we I'm can't straighten that out. I'm just saying that they aren't picking up the paper bags. Well, I mean, we've got... This stuff's got rained on four times. I mean, pretty soon it's yeah. not going to be a bag anymore. <laughs> But you know what's going to happen after? You're going to have to clean up the leaves that are left over and put them back in the bag. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, it, yeah. I don't know how to tell you. I mean, okay. I really don't. I mean, I don't mean sarcastically. I don't no, know. I know. I, and I know, it's, I know it's not you guys, but that's just great. I usually don't take questions while I'm talking, but let's go with the lady in the bag. I have a question. Okay, the golf course cleaned up all, and then the why? What did they do with their debris? They put it in a pile back here, and it's been hauled away since... Why couldn't we as individuals go ahead and throw it there and let them all... They're a government entity and they do things differently. And they're under a different set of laws that we're under. So they did what they're allowed to do by law. They moved it off the streets, got this place looking good, and they're paying to have it hauled yeah, away. The village is hauling our stuff away. That's the key. There's a difference. They've, they've got a FEMA loan probably, or a FEMA application then to cover some of what they did. but. The city is paying for this. It's not costing you anything right now to have it called away. They might raise your taxes, but right now the city is take cleaning up the piles you have in front of your house free of charge. Okay. Okay. Getting back. So we know about the brush pickup. Give them some time, and once everything is settled, the dust is settled from that, then we'll get the streets cleaned up again one more time. Uh, our activities committee uh, started something that's that has that, happened twice now in two months. And the third Tuesday of every month at 10 o'clock, they turn this place into the coffee clutch. And first, and what you do, you bring your coffee cup, if you forget they've got them, and they have goodies to eat, and there's no charge. There's tables of four set up around the room and you get to visit with your neighbors and do it. First time we had about 30 people and there were three or four of us gentlemen here. The last one was 40 people and probably about eight or 10 guys. So it's not just a something for the wives, it's something for everybody to come in. Coffee's good. Uh, the gals on the activities committee make some pretty good tasty uh, snacks to eat on. And just gives you a chance to uh, sit and visit, meet some of the neighbors you haven't seen in a while or whatever's going on. So the next one is going to be on the third Tuesday in November. I'm stealing part of your report. No, that's, that's okay. okay. It's going to be um, the 11th of November. Okay. Can you, can you do it the 26th? It's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> well, you can come out. We'll burn a candle for you. <laughs> okay. So keep that in mind. Uh, on this, af this afternoon, the village board of review met, and uh, we went, and it was a hearing. It wasn't a licensing or an approval meeting to take information. The bad thing that we came away from that was explained to us is the gas station is going to get built. It's been approved already a long time ago. It's going to happen. Uh, 
I talked, Eileen talked, uh, a couple residents talked, and my theme with them talking about it is, you're building a gas station, they're going to make money, you're costing Stony Brook money. We have right now, we're going to be paying to do something about the sound on uh, Corkscrew Road. When they put in the gas station, it's going to be noisy there too, we got to look at sound barriers for that. That comes from us. We maintain that road, nobody else does, but they're going to use it. The nice thing about it, after everybody talked and they got the gist of the theme, the chairman suggested to the developer that perhaps you should talk to the people in Stony Brook and see what you can work out with them. They're making money. We're going to lose money on the deal. Is, it, is this by the school you're talking yes. about? Yeah. 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 I, okay. Right I, up on the corner here. Yeah. I was just going to say something. Uh, when I was a big brother, I was driving uh, Uber and Lyft for charity and all those places they all ran prostitutes and drugs out of them. And boy, you gotta, we got to keep a close eye on it. That's right. Even, even the one down in, uh, down the street here. Yeah. It, it, it's an attractive nuisance. Uh, they're well aware of it, but the strangeness of being here in Florida, they do things differently. Now, that was still a wagon trail, and 1988 is when they approved the gas station. So it doesn't make much sense, but that's how it happened. Uh, we can work, if we can work with the developer, if they get the message, or we can keep leaning on the city, uh, we hope to have some shareable expenses paid. Can I charge my uh, DeLorean there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So that's the situation at the gas station. Sorry about that. We tried. I thank all the people that it was mentioned. They got over 100 emails from here. But it's set in stone that it can't be changed. Uh, the one good thing about it is, we hope is that when it was set up, it was set up as a non-24 hour gas station. That's in the, that's in the zoning thing. Uh, they might try and change that somehow or other, but uh, the village is aware of it. They're looking into it. So unfortunately, we have a new neighbor coming in and they're also going to be building uh, about a 500 foot long uh, storage facility, which that was approved years ago. They were going to do it just before the recession. And now they're going to do it again. They'll be out there, but that doesn't bring the traffic and the garbage and the low life we've just talked about. So we'll handle that way in the back. Uh, yeah, I missed the meeting, but are they going to do anything about rerouting the school drop off back there? No. No. That's going to still be there. Still remain the same. Yeah. Well, they here, here's their thinking on that, which I find most interesting. They have on their drawings, if you look at it, if you look at Corkscrew Road, it's a flat drawing, but their property comes in and it's like this. They're putting New Bridge Road in there and they are expecting the people dropping children off at the school or picking them up will drive down to Firehouse Lane and drive back in and, and wait. And when they leave, they'll go out the front gate and it's going to be signage. But they can't read stop signs now, so I don't know what they're going to do, but they'll still be coming in behind you folks on Weymouth and not much we can do about that other than try and give the best sound protection we can do. So make sure the gates are working. Yeah. Ma'am. Why can't they plot the storage and the gas station? You have to ask them that. Yeah. We've, we've, we've raised that. We we tried as hard as we can. They says they they sympathize with us, but it's done. We agree. We agree, but no. no. That's just the way the wheels of government That's turn. Okay. Tom, do you have a treasurer's report? I do. I do. And um, as I mentioned before, um, again, because of Ian and some other stuff, uh, th this is not a final numbers because they're still trying to um, get those in in order. But as of dis uh, excuse me, as of September 30th, the operating cash we had was. Um, 534,000. The reserve cash was um, over uh, 214,000. So total cash is just above 749,000. The income uh, we've had is uh, 1.6 mil, which is about 77,000 more than we had in the budget. Expenses uh, 1.64, which is around 34,000 more than we had in our budget. And as of September 30th, we're running at a 
profit of 43,000. Thank you. Do you have anything to add tonight? Nope. Elizabeth. Oh, okay. Activities committee, well, you kind of. Well, I took one of them. Okay. The next, um, let's see, Jimmy Keys. They'll be, um, there's already tickets for pre-sale. We still have room. Um, he's a great entertainer, I heard. I've never seen him. Uh, he's going to be at the tent. Then we're doing a turkey trot again this year. It'll be the second one. Um, and that's Thanksgiving morning. I believe there's $5 registration. You can do it the morning of. Um, I believe it starts at 8 o'clock. Um, preparation, oh, sorry. Uh, breakfast with Santa is on 12-3, and so is the golf cart parade. <coughs> Um, so please join this year. The golf cart parade will be a little bit different. We're going to meet back at Stony Brook instead of at Duffy's. So it's changed up. We'll have food trucks um, and, of course, judging of the golf carts. And we're trying something new this year is decorate your home for the holidays. It's going to be from uh, December 5th through December 12th, and the residents will judge. And there's three prizes and three different um, criterias. The info is, be, there's an e-blast that already went out, but they'll be periodically going out, and we're going to try to get a sign to have as many houses participate. The prize is $100 um, per category. Thank you. Um, so hopefully we'll have a lot of participants. Um, we're, we have R.C. Smith coming, which he's a comedian. Um, great. We had him probably about four years ago um, on January 11th. Tickets will be going on sale early December and there'll be an email blast going out. And also Frank Torino is coming back um, to the tent and that's on January 20th. So they'll kind of give you a head start, but we're gonna send out uh, all the upcoming events, but there's a lot of, a lot of good events. Also, um, the garage sale is November 5th, the first Saturday. It's from eight to noon. It gets open to the public at 9. Um, that's all I have, I think, on activities. But I do want to mention something. I, to propose um, with the rental of this room to charge a $20 user fee. And that $20 is to replenish anything that is used, whether it's the sugar packets that are in there, whether it's the tablecloths, whether it's the knives, because we have to replenish. There's stuff that's either misplaced or just not returned or broken. So I think that would be a fair assessment because I don't think the residents should have to pay to replace these things. But I don't know how that would be bud budgeted as far because that wouldn't be obviously income to us. It would be a use item because we pay taxes on the income of the room, correct? Right. Yeah, so I don't know how you guys feel about that. Are we charging anything now? Isn't there a fee now to rent? We charge to rent the room. But this is a fee to use because they're able to use, um, if there's coffee it's being used, if there's sugar, if there's stirs, if there's creamers. Anything that's out. The, the fridge, I mean, yeah. there's the tablecloths that we have to replace, knives, I mean, silverware. Just Would it be easier just to increase the? The user fee was the, yeah. $20, 120 rather than 100 Yeah, and just and call it a day. But does that, I don't know how it goes with budgeting and the line items. Currently covered under the janitorial line that we were talking about earlier. So that, that's is that the coffee that then she's talking about? No, 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 the janitorial stuff is the stuff in the gym. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, this yeah. is just when residents can rent this room to say, let's have a baby shower or a birthday party, they come in and rent this room. But they're able to use all our stuff that's in there, whether it's dishes, cups. I mean, they're welcome to anything, but we have to replace those items. What if we threw it on as a $20 non-refundable deposit? Well, in water, if we have if we have water in there, it it's just. Yeah. I, think need, I think in order to do this, we've got to put it on a, the uh, agenda for next month. Okay. Yeah, because I'm also thinking, what can we just like lock up the cabinet so they can't? We can get a key so they can use the. Yeah. Well, the and we have stuff in there too for our lunches yeah. and water and stuff, and that stuff just kind of. Mm -hmm. Walks out the door. Well, why don't you bring that back next month? Yeah, put it on agenda. Jen, can put. <laughs> <laughs> you got Jim doing it, right? He's already writing it. Okay. 
you have anything from the RC or we're going to turn into business? No. Lloyd has one. Okay. Lloyd? It would be easier just to raise the rent of the roll. That's what we said. That's what we know. said, yeah. I don't know how, that's not my thing, yeah. you know, accounting. I that's mean, probably so the way it'll end up, but we'll wait till yeah, they come back at us. It's the easy way to do it. Yeah. Well, either there's a non refundable deposit. Which one? Uh, non refundable deposit. Let's go into the $20. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. Anything else, then? Um, no, I'll wait for the. Okay, uh, Jim, building the grounds. Yeah, uh, Bill and I drove around the community a couple of days after Ian, and we found uh, we found a lot of light poles down uh, throughout the community, and eleven street signs down, trash can uh, around the community center. We found. Uh, at the tennis court, a light pulled on, and at the basketball court, also a light pulled on. The uh, wall out at Miramar is badly damaged. Uh, there is at least 20 sections of a wall that are either completely gone or partially gone. There was a sewage problem throughout the community, which some of you probably had the unfortunate experience of smelling it. But luckily, with the help of Tammy, Tammy made numerous calls to get that cleaned up pretty quickly. Uh, the last thing I have had nothing to do with the, the uh, hurricane, but just want to make an announcement that the community center is scheduled to be painted starting November 7th. So there may be some activities that are going to have to be, be affected. Affected. Get yeah. right. the coffee. I'm sorry. Get back the coffee. It's not coffee. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Mark. Safety. Okay. Uh, first thing, uh, Jim and I drove around to verify that the uh, work on the sidewalks for the trip hazards had been corrected, and obviously you know that, <laughs> we paid the bill. Uh, they did a great job. Um, secondly, uh, I, I got some information that a resident is interested in having a three-way stop sign put on Brixham. And uh, I went out there and, and, and looked at the area. Uh, I have some questions, and I think we're gonna discuss that at, at, at tonight's meeting. Um, I'm not sure that a three-way stop sign is the only stop signs that are needed at that particular intersection. If we're going to do that intersection, there's two other ones that, that need to be done. Um, I'd like to hear from the resident what his actual complaint is. Uh, I don't know if he's here. Yeah, he is. Okay. And I was I saw you the other day. I wanted to check all the I other streets. The other ones. Yeah, I, I I got yours too. <laughs> well, we live on Brixham International Speedway, and we know there's no way the sheriff's department can enforce the speed limits there. I've got an app on my phone, and I it'll, it's radar. I've clocked one vehicle at 57 miles an hour. The, the medium speed going by my house, which is right at the intersection of Chaplis. Mm -hmm. Brixham Run is around 42 miles an hour. I talked with the neighbors, and we know that they're probably not going to stop all the time, but I think the stop signs will at least slow the traffic down. I have to back out of my driveway into three roads, you know, traffic coming three ways. Mm -hmm. And when they're coming at 40 miles an hour, <laughs> it's, you know, it's tough because, as you all know, everybody has two cars now, so the neighbor's cars are in their driveways. And, when you back out, you don't, you can't see until you're in the road. Probably speed bump up, and it, that will that'll, it'll just fly by them. Where, where is this on Brixham? It's Chap 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 and Brixham, right? It, which it, the second Jim, you know my house yeah. is. It's just a little right. bit south. Right. So I, I've done I've done some research, you know, as far as as um, proper use of stop signs, and and what's always come back is that we should have a traffic safety analysis done to make sure that the stop sign is going to solve your problem. So that's what I would propose before we stick signs in the ground that we uh, contract a traffic safety engineering company and have them look and evaluate the 
this. I, to, this is going to sound like a snarky comment. It doesn't mean to be that, but it, to the point you made is they're not stopping at the stop signs we have now. What's one more? There's no, no, there is no stop sign there. That's not yeah, what I no, mean. No, but he but, means but, the ones we already but, have. But, but, but we have stop signs, and we've discussed well, well, people roll through them. They don't look. So it's like, you know, we're not, this isn't the, probably the right spot to talk about this, but right near that stop sign is a resident officer. He can't write a speed ticket for 20 miles an hour speed limit. He can write a ticket for failure to stop at a stop sign. Okay. So, and, 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 he's, and he's two houses away from the stop sign. What, and what, what stop how about what they do in Belaterra, where they have the radar? We looked at that. that. That's very I got that shot too. down and burned. It's called the Nighthawk. Yeah. We've looked at that. We, and yeah. we proposed well, it. And cost expensive. And then enforcing it after you go through a couple lawsuits, they figure they learn that you can do it. All right, let me just say that this, the federal government has a standard for stop signs. Uh, it's a municipal uniform traffic safety control devices. And one thing they say that is stop signs should not be used to slow down speed. That's not what they're designed for. That being said, I still think we should have a engineering company look well, at it. I also needed the stop so I can back my car right. into the street. So that's not, that has nothing to do with speed. That's so I can get out. Right, but you had said that they were they're going at 40 some odd miles an hour. So stop sign is not is not going to solve that problem. Well, it will, but the state, well, this state maybe. I was on yeah. the Livingston County Traffic Safety Council. And we use it quite frequently, and New York never had a problem with right. using stop signs to slow traffic. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. Right. Yeah, it might seem like we're dragging our feet on this, but we'll bring it back <laughs> next month with a cost estimate and everything else. Okay. And we do it. Jim, if you're late, adding things to the agenda, you want to pop that one on yep. too? Thank you. Mark, anything else? Uh, that seems to be it. Okay. We'll move on to the uh, property manager's report. Okay, ARC committee uh, for October approved 30 and denied two. Rentals and sales, there were 17 rentals with four purchases. Smart collection, I did not receive their current report yet. Uh, deactivating accounts, no change from last month. Um, fines, we have 13 parking fines. They see four of them were for the same car. Yeah. I'll move that we find them each twenty five dollars. I'll second them. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to find each for the uh, parking fines twenty five dollars, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, trash cans, we have thirteen uh, violations on that. For the month of September, is well. We should make a motion first, I guess. Go ahead. I'll, I'll move that we we find the uh, thirteen tickets, thirteen hundred dollars each. I'll second. Okay, go ahead. Does any of this have to do with with uh, with Ian? No, we stopped uh, writing tickets. It was before. This, okay. before. Well, this was all before. Okay. So all right. this is going up to September twenty third. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of opposing the $100 fine to 13 people with trash cans, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, other fines, A, B, and C, I would like to actually defer that to uh, Mark's committee for review first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number D, we've already discussed that. Um, so I think we're fine on that one. Okay. Uh, number seven on Wyndham. Um, Explain this one. Will you? I don't want to. From all appearances, well. Take a look at the. I saw the pictures. Yeah. And I've seen the house. Mark, would you pass these? This will explain some of it. Uh, the last. Um, Was it a rental? No, it's a homeowner. And read this information, it'll give you some idea of what's going on. Uh, the last visitor to this house was back in uh, March of 2021. Uh, we have pictures that the key and garage opener on, on the counter. They ha there is absolutely nothing left in the house. Right. Uh, the pool is a complete disaster. 
Uh, my understanding there was a neighbor cutting the grass who has since stopped. That's now we're getting phone calls about the grass and the appearance of the house. And well, well, in the past we've, we've always hired someone to, to mow the lawn and build back the... Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's going to be banked owned again or what's going on, but the taxes have been currently paid on the property. Have been? Have oh, been. Right so I'm not sure what's going on. So apparently with the situation, somebody in the family was there at one time since this happened. Well, it was a husband and wife. Are they, are they current on, on and maybe it says here, on their association fees? You know, I haven't looked that up yet. I haven't seen that pop up on the... Uh, I haven't seen this name on there, so... Yeah. You know, I, first of all, I propose that, that the first thing we do is we hire somebody to get in there and, and, and bowl and trim and bill them. Yes. Okay. Um, we can that's do that. the first thing to do. Yeah. And, and to do it on a monthly basis. Now, I think for now, the, for the next four months, we can do it on a monthly basis. I mean, Russell only does his once a month anyway. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think it should be. It's not fair to the neighbors. No, we should do no, it. Should. Do you want me to contact the village in regards to Bi the weekly. pool? Yeah. There's a picture in your thing of yeah, the, the pool. Have you looked at the pool picture? It wasn't yeah. color, but it yeah. looked yucky. Yeah. Old, I would assume. Yeah. How did we? Yeah. Get the, the, get how did we get the inside? Mr. Photo? Knight to take a look at it. Now, how do you get the inside photos? Door's through the light. window. Huh? Through the window. Through the window. Through the window. Oh, your shades. Oh. Yeah. Did the house have any hurricane damage? No. Interesting. Very clean. Very yeah, you guys have black and white, but yeah. here's, a, it was sent to you in color, so it's it was good. on your computer in no, color. No, I'm yeah. inside the house is spotless. Is the electric yeah. still onto the house? I have no idea. I can look at a meter and see. If not, it might be mold infested as well. So I think besides taking care of the exterior for the neighbors, uh, ask the city to take a look into it and see what they can do with it as an abandoned home. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they'll treat it as an abandoned home with the paying taxes. Yeah, their taxes. Yeah, I know. Well, at least we get something from them. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then I gave you a current report of uh, CCNR violations, we have uh, just 65 that are open. Most of those are um, painting uh, or pressure washing the house and roof replacements. Any questions on that report? No. Yeah, are we doing anything to follow up with this? All of these? Yeah. Be updated next month. Okay. Yeah, still well, right now with Ian going through, we've suspended going yeah, around. I mean, I there's understand. no purpose in doing that. So we are not going out looking at anything right now. Everybody needs time to recoup. Has FEMA been in here? Did you say? I don't know if it's FEMA, but it's through the village. They have they've hired a third party to come in and clean up. I know, like, I read something in uh, next door the worst. Somebody came in with a badge and everything, and they went to somebody's house and put a red tarp on it, and there were some people who were so grateful, they went up and took care of it without even being asked to do it. Yeah, I, there was this website you could go to to request that being done. Yeah, the blue tarps. Yeah, yeah. blue, red, or whatever. They got all different colors now. But yeah, FEMA, I would say one thing from my work experience, the thing I hated to hear if I was handling a disaster was, I'm from FEMA, I'm here to help them. Go stand over there. Yeah. Now, listening to what they're doing and seeing what they're doing, they're doing uh, the somebody job. got them working. They're doing, the and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. But when you hit something like this, you got all kinds of organizations coming and want to help. We can sort of control what's coming and you can't stop the federal government. But uh, It's kind of nice to read something that says that they did something without being asked and they're there before the Yeah, leave. and that, that's something new. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Um, hurricane, uh, did anybody have any other questions on that? Okay, in regards to the hurricane, um, between Alliant and all the committees and stuff, uh, everyone did a well job in preparing. Uh, we had minimal damage. Uh, street signs, of course, were blown all over. Tennis light pole came down. Uh, we had the Miramar wall with the trees. 
uh, basketball light pole and one trash can. So right now, uh, we locked out, big time. Bocce courts, we've already discussed that. E-voting, we discussed that. Well, did we discuss bocce ball? Bocce? Eileen. Eileen did. Well, she brought it up. Yeah, but it says board, or board discussion. Uh, discussion. Required. Okay. Yeah, she's getting more uh, two more proposals. Okay, all right. Okay, I missed that part. And I had a discussion with Tom last week that we moved uh, the 20000 from 2024 to 2023 okay. uh, that did not show up on the sheet that you have, okay. but it is moved into 2023. Okay. And it didn't affect? Didn't affect anything, okay. yeah. Um, E-voting, we talked on that. I'll have that out by the end of the week. 12, we'll need to discuss at some point. That's been the executive session tonight. Yeah. Yep. Um, current projects, uh, holiday lights to be turned on just before Thanksgiving. Do we get a discount with one less tree? <laughs> no, because we're going to put peaks up on the gatehouse. <laughs> we're just thought I'd ask. I'm wearing it out there, Lloyd. He was out, Matt was out yesterday from uh, JDR's uh, looking at the medium and the fountain lights on the inside. And everything's going to work because there's a lot of lights laying on the ground and stuff there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He was out yesterday to assess the situation. Okay. okay. Did they finish the Christmas lights? Yeah. The, uh, well, in the trees, the Christmas lights are up. I'm, uh, not, not, not the fine. They can no. do the fine. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. Just, just, just peak. Power just the top. At, at the fountain, I think. The mm -hmm. Tammy, just from a uh, how are, how have we been doing like actually getting the contractors to come in and work? Has that been an issue? I'm just curious if they're being pulled into more, you know, tri tri triage areas. Um, actually, we have some really good vendors that we've got great relationships with, and yeah, okay. the pool people came through for us. They actually dropped off extra supplies before the storm. Um, the electrical, I mean, so far, so we've been pretty much on base. Okay. It's just getting the stuff to do repairs, like yeah. at hole number one, the pump is still out. It's getting the pump. Yeah. Um, so we have a fantastic relationship with the vendors. That's it's good. just getting the stuff. Hey, I'm just curious, what happened between uh, Irma 